Hey, what's up guys? I'm Toothy Deerite, and today we got a new unturned update with 3.22.9.0 and in this update there is a lot of stuff especially for map makers. So to start things off, whenever you join PEI, and I'll join PEI testing because I need to show off some other stuff in this update, but now you can actually have loading music for maps, and it's actually map specific as well. So there's now actually a theme for PEI. Also the loading screen kind of moves around slightly which is kind of cool. Yes that, that song was made actually by Stazwall. So you'll actually hear that whenever you uh, play and also go into the editor. It can also be disabled uh, via going into options and there's loading screen music volume and you can essentially turn that right off. So yes, if you want loading music, I recommend uh, commissioning Sawswall for that. That would, uh, I'm j just saying, he officially made it into the game, so. Probably in the future as well, there might be themes for other maps, who knows? That, that could be quite interesting. One other major change that I don't quite understand, but basically in control settings, there's now sensitivity scaling mode. I think this is for aiming. And there's now a zoom factor, legacy, and focal length. I, I genuinely do not know the difference between them. The freezing mythical effect was also updated to look a lot nicer than it did before. Now inside of the editor, there is still edit dev kit since not everything has been moved over to legacy editor. One thing I almost forgot to mention was there's now a browse files button. Essentially any map that you're editing, you can go directly to the files if you have the map selected here. This will bring me to the files of Russia Edit, and this will bring me to the files of PEI Testing. Really nice and very handy. Alright, so I am inside of the editor. Before, if you had dev kit terrain, you wouldn't be able to really open this up. More specifically, uh, you wouldn't be able to open up this. Which is really cool. You can actually edit the terrain in this in this editor. My my only kind of complaint about this is the button for this keeps moving around. I kind of wish it was it either just had like a, a solid spot so you can like you know click through it really quick, or if it was just like at the bottom. I mean I mean there's obviously the uh, hotkeys which are listed right there, which is really nice. There's also little hints as well throughout everything for the more obscure things and stuff. So uh, cancel is R. Oh, I never knew that. I never knew you could uh, like cancel that. Ooh, that's yeah that that's really cool. So huh? Even I just learned something new. If you are familiar with the editor prior to this update, you might notice that the uh, resources is gone and it's been replaced by tiles, which is something that was in the dev kit editor. You can select tiles, you can see essentially all the materials and all that, and one cool detail is you can actually copy layers to all tiles. Since the uh, order of the materials is actually quite important and stuff, so you actually need to have these, otherwise I believe if I fly over here, you get this weird smooth edge. That's that's really really strange. Here you can also do materials as well. Uh, some new materials that have been added to the game have been these fallback options. If you're familiar with uh oh oh hang on I have auto foundation on whoops. If you're familiar with like Gmod and stuff, you might uh. You might recognize maybe like this stuff. I think if a material is missing, it will most likely uh, fall back to these. And I'm a really big fan of there being orange and purple. A little disappointed there's no uh, pink and black like Gmod. But uh, hey, what, what, are, what are we gonna do? You basically have everything here, and uh, you can also paint foliage as well. Uh, you got like all the brush settings as well. You got like paint, uh, extract, uh, bake as well. As I mentioned earlier, resources is gone. So where did that go? That is actually now inside of the, um, inside of foliage. So I can essentially paint down pine trees. 
And that is actually really cool. One thing I have noticed is I don't believe my trees are showing up. I just found out why, and it's because you gotta make .asset files similar to how you make grass for the trees. So if you know how to do that, that's pretty good. I might make a tutorial later, like I mentioned before, a full tutorial series. That'll be pretty cool. One new tool added to the editor was a hole cutter. Previously, we used these dev kit nodes to cut weird holes into the terrain, and these were not really performance friendly. Many map makers still usually preferred basically doing something like this, where just they just lower the terrain and stuff. It's not the nicest thing, but it kind of beat using the nodes. One other issue with them was if you flew f far enough away, uh, but the terrain would come back and if you had, like, a huge area that ha had just a huge hole cut into it, it would be filled up if you were too far away. So if you go under materials and press, I believe, R, this will cut the terrain. It's not as precise as the dev kit node, but it is more performance friendly and unlike the dev kit node, pretty much have as many holes as you want. Like, there's no limit. You can literally go as crazy. You can erase the entire map if you want. Though with a dev kit node, you could have like 10. This change was mainly due to Unity actually supporting cutting holes into the terrain now. This stuff wasn't available when Unturned 3 first came out. So it's really nice to see this feature, because now it's as simple as that. So any existing maps that have these around will probably have to double check these. Uh, they have all been converted, but the conversion hasn't been the cleanest. And yeah. One new addition as well was to the navigation nodes. There is now a checkbox for infinite aggro range. And what this does, it essentially works like a horde beacon. So after you check that box, in-game, uh, this is what's gonna kinda happen. Every zombie on the nav mesh that spawns is gonna be after you. It's gonna be pretty, uh, pretty deadly. This is mainly recommended for boss fights during quests, like, on Elver with the whole, uh, with the boss fights on there, and very handy for, uh, quest stuff. One addition with guns is there's now a new line that you can put inside of the gun dat file, which is it requires non-zero attachment caliber, and you gotta put like true or false behind it. It's false by default, but if you put true, so previously any calibered gun could attach any single attachment onto it. For example, to tactical laser, I'd be able to attach it onto here because it doesn't have a caliber set to it. This is really bad for custom maps and having like adaptive chambering, for example. But now you can just set that up to actually not take any uh, custom attachments. And the level asset of the map, you can actually control skills quite a bit. Basically allowing you to either max them out, make them completely disabled, or just have them be set to a certain level. So now there is actually a cost to modifier per skill. For example here, I have survival, I put a cost multiplier of 100, and now it takes a thousand experience to level up survival. And I also did that with crafting with a multiplier of 20, so we can make uh, skills and stuff actually more expensive. For maps inside of the config.json file, there was a melee damage multiplier, and that would uh, tie in with, uh, with repairing as well. But those two have been separated to melee repair multiplier and melee damage multiplier. Uh, the latter being already existing, but that is now separated. So you can control the multiplier of the damage done to vehicles, but also repairing. For example, I put the multiplier like... I, put, I essentially put the multiplier really high and that pretty much instantly repaired that. That's kind of funny. I say that's a really epic change, because since before, basically, if you wanted to give vehicles more health, it would take longer to repair, but in the same time, they would damage just as fast uh, when it comes to melee damage, so that is, that is a very nice change. For modding as well, there is now vehicle and turret passenger unity events, 
And there's also th this NPC line. I heard it's really cool if you like NPC stuff. I could not explain that one though. On the Germany map, there has been an update on the grass materials. They are no longer brown and instead they are actually green. So that is a very nice change. It looks a lot better. The Sky Crane will no longer pick up destroyed vehicles. Oh, there I go. Currently, there is a placeholder workaround for airdrops that drop on higher terrain. For example, if an airdrop node was placed on the top of this mountain, the plane would fly through and drop it inside of the mountain, which was not ideal. So I believe the way that it's done now is it's based on the airdrop's node height. Anyway, that has been Unturned 3.22.9.0. I hope you enjoyed this video, and hopefully it was informative. Uh, patch notes will be in the description, as always, if you want to go over the, some of the stuff that I did not cover in this video, which mainly just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff that I just kind of don't understand.